What's up, YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your techno dad here. And in this video, I'm going to answer a question I get asked all the time. What are the advantages and disadvantages of a power amplifier? And we're going to get into it right after the jump. If you are looking to pick up speakers for your living room, bedroom, den, office, or full-fledged home theater or dedicated listening room, Klipsch has you covered. From very affordable bookshelf speakers and Bluetooth speakers with HDMI ARC to the massive floor-standing speakers found in their heritage line, Klipsch has speakers for every level of audio enthusiast. Since 1946, Klipsch has been providing legendary sound through speakers, headphones, and home audio. Step up your audio game and go to Klipsch.com today to fulfill your home audio desire, no matter the size. And I'm back. Now, as I said in the intro, I do get asked this question quite a bit. Why do I like to use a power amp? And so I decided to make this video on the advantages and disadvantage of having an external power amp. So let's get into it. So the first consideration is how much power do your speakers need? And I feel that's based on sensitivity and distance from your speakers to your listening area. Now, I went into great detail about this in a separate video called how much power do speakers need? And I'll link that in the description and with the card up top. Now, a lot of you and including myself are using an audio video receiver or AVR. And this video is not meant to like dis AVRs at all, at all. I mean, the AVR actually does quite a few things. You know, you've got HDMI switching, you've got inputs and outputs. It's the hub of your system. It does a whole lot of stuff. There's the room correction, the dynamic volume, dynamic EQ. It's doing the audio and sending it all over your room. So it does a whole lot, it does a whole lot. Let's not like discount the AVR, it's doing a lot. So let's say you have a nine channel AV receiver. Now that power output is only measured in two channels driven. Now ideally you want the number that's two channels driven uh, full bandwidth that's 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and you want it to be like pretty low harmonic distortion like 0 0.005 percent eight percent you know something like that anyway that's the rating for the avrs that we get all the time so let's say the avr is rated at 140 watts per channel into eight ohms full bandwidth thd of 0 0.08 percent and two channels driven so let's say that's what we're working with okay when we are in a two channel mode, meaning stereo listening, sure, that's what you're getting. But let's say we go into a nine channel Atmos setup like I have upstairs, 5.1.4. So I've got five ear level speakers and I've got four height speakers and one subwoofer. So obviously the subwoofer is self powered. We're not really going to worry about that, but we are going to worry about the nine channels. Now in a home theater, your most important speakers are your left your center and your right speaker. And we call that the front stage. Now for argument's sake, let's say we're running content to all nine channels and it's constantly going. And most of the time in a movie, that's not the case. Like there's one cool Atmos scene and then there's nothing else for like half an hour. I don't know. That's just the way it goes. And that's kind of the way I've seen it, which is kind of a shame. But anyway, let's just say that all nine channels are running some sort of content at the same time. So in this situation, we don't know what speakers are getting what kind of power at all. Okay, they do not tell us that, they do not rate it for that. And so that's kind of like, you know, disappointing. A lot of the times when you're shopping for an AVR, you know, there's AVR A and B, and A is $200 less than B, but B has 10 watts more, you know, power rating. So it, does that really make a difference in a situation where it's like nine channels and we don't know what's going on where? I mean, it's a bit confusing and I, I even, I'm, I'm tired of it at this point. And along with all those nine channels running, the AVR is still doing those other processes. So you can imagine that the power supply that's in the AVR has to already be beefy, but at the same time, there's a lot of power going to other functions of the AVR and not just powering the speakers. Power amplifiers, on the other hand, are different. They're only doing one thing. They are powering your speakers. That's it. That's all, nothing else. So it can concentrate and send all that power in that power supply to powering your speakers. And that's a great thing. So let's take the 
Outlaw Model 5000 5 channel amplifier as our example. Now the interesting thing about power amplifiers is they actually give you the ratings for all channels driven. In this case it's 5 and with 5 channels driven we get 120 watts per channel into 8 ohms at full bandwidth. And that's, that's really good, that's a good amount of power. Now they also give you a 2 channel rating. When you remove 3 speakers or you just connect 2 speakers to that amplifier you're getting 170 watts per channel into 8 ohms full bandwidth. And that is really great for, you know, music listening in two channels, especially if you have towers or some beefy bookshelf speakers, they're going to love that power. If we connect three speakers, again, our front stage, left, center and right speakers to that amplifier, we're getting somewhere between 140, maybe 150 watts per channel into 8 ohms at full bandwidth. And that is huge. So think about it. The AVR is putting out 140 watts per channel into two channels, but when you're watching nine channel movie or whatever, you don't really get that. So now we can guarantee that our front stage, three channels, is getting 140 to 150 watts per channel into eight ohms full bandwidth, while all the other speakers are active. Do you get what I'm saying there? Do you see that? So you're actually guaranteeing that you're getting that extra power and a consistent amount of power to your main speakers. And what a power amplifier is to me is having that extra power for headroom and dynamics. What does that mean? Headroom means you've got extra gas in the tank for those big dynamic shifts. What are dynamic shifts? That's when you go from a scene with very, very quiet, little bit of talking, maybe nothing going on at all, birds chirping something to big ass explosion. That is dynamics. You go from soft to loud. And I hope I didn't clip the microphone, but that was my little example. Or you go from something really loud to something really, really soft. And that's also a, a dynamics. I always say it, the movie Seabiscuit, very, very good uh, demonstration of that because it's like a horse racing scene and it's like horses thundering down the like raceway and then it cuts to a different scene where somebody's listening to the horse race on a radio in a hospital bed and it's completely quiet. So, you know, that's what I mean and that's why I think a power amplifier is much better than just your AV receiver. Now, I'm not saying you do ditch the AV receiver, you can use a power amplifier in conjunction with your AV receiver to power your front stage and let the AV receiver handle your rear speakers, your Atmo speakers. Those speakers don't have a lot going on. There is a good amount at times, but most of the time, yeah, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Now, personally, I like to have my ear level speakers powered at the same level. So 120 watts per channel from that outlaw will power my five ear level speakers. And then I can have the Atmos channels powered by the AV receiver. No problem there. It's going to divvy it up whatever power it has to divvy up amongst the four or five channels that I have up on my ceiling. So when you're using a power amplifier, you are guaranteeing that all your speakers are getting the same amount of power and it's reliable power. It is consistent. You don't have anything else going on in that box except those transformers are powering your speakers and that's it. It's not doing any kind of like decoding. It's not, you know, time aligning this and that. It's not doing any of those things that the AVR is doing. And the AVR is doing a lot of things. So let's, 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 let's give the AVR a rest, right? Let's give it a little bit of help with the power amplifier. So now that I've talked about all the advantages, let's talk about the disadvantages. I can only think of two. And if you guys can think of more, let me know down in the comments below. But I think uh, the first is you're going to be using up more power. Now, my TV is on all the time. Pretty much whenever my wife is home, the TV is on because she likes to have something in the background when she's cooking or cleaning or whatever. She likes to have it on. So with that, then the power amplifier is on. So if the TV's on for like seven, eight hours a day, Power amplifier, AVR, those are on eight hours a day. So you could possibly be incurring more on your electric bill. If you got solar, you're good to go then probably. And number two is space. Where are you gonna put this thing? You have to have another spot for your power amplifier in your entertainment center or rack. Here are a couple of pictures. You can see my TV's kind of at an angle. So that allows me to put a rack behind the TV. 
and I've got the power conditioner at the bottom, I've got a power amplifier, I've got an integrated amplifier, and a turntable at the top, but that top shelf kind of is like equipment storage because I got a lot of stuff in-house to review, and I'm running out of space, but that is another story all on its own. Now, another question you might have is, well, my speakers are only rated for 100 watts per channel or 80 watts per channel. Another tip for you guys, if you didn't know, speakers, you should always overpower them. Overpower your speakers. You will actually do damage if you underpower your speakers, right? Because you're trying to get to a certain volume and you keep cranking it and it gets louder and then the distortion comes in and that can kind of like mess up your drivers. You don't want that. So you want to overpower your speakers. And I like to like overpower them by like maybe 100 watts, maybe 150 watts. If you have speakers that are rated at, you know, 20 to 150 watts, yeah, I wouldn't mind putting two 250 into those. Like, that's just me. But, you know, overpowering them is better than underpowering them. You can actually do damage by underpowering your speakers. That's another tip for you guys, just so you were kind of confused and were thinking about that in the back of your mind. Now you know. Your speakers are gonna love the extra power and your system is gonna sound great. Another tip is to connect everything up if you are using an external amplifier and then running your room correction after that because you do want your system to sound balanced and you wanna have that extra headroom for all those dynamic shifts. And I think that's it. I think that's it. If you guys have any questions about this or anything else, let me know down in the comments below or on social or email, whichever you like to use. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your Techno Dad, and I'll see you next time.